Well, but first up, she is the author of All the Single Ladies, Unmarried Women, and the Rise of an Independent Nation, and a writer at large for New York Magazine, whose recent cover story is Hillary Clinton versus herself, Rebecca Traister. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Boy, you have a long intro. <laughs> How you doing? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Oh, I'm happy to have you. All right. So, single women, I understand, are going to be the key voting block in yes, this election. They are. That's interesting because in past elections, we heard they don't vote enough. They were the key voting block in 2012 as well. They were 23% of the electorate, so almost a quarter of the electorate. Mm -hmm. And they voted for Barack Obama by a kind of staggering margin, 67 to 31%. And by many, by many measures, by many measures, they are responsible for Barack Obama getting reelected. And I, I have this sneaking suspicion that the margin might be wider when it comes to choosing between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Yeah, but you know who doesn't like Hillary? White women. Uh, among white women, Hillary and Trump are tied. What is that? White women, let's see, woman, woman hater. Well, interestingly... Woman, <laughs> woman hater, I... Though, interestingly, amongst white single women... Single women. Single right. white women okay. vote Democratic as well. So really, marriage is the problem. I've always said white, that. <laughs> married white women are your problem. Married white women are your problem. They're not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about uh, marriage. You know, it's interesting the way things have changed. When I was first doing a show in the 90s, you know, uh, I had to, like, stick up for the idea of being single is normal. You're not a weird person if you don't get married. And now, whenever I tell people I've never been married, they're like, good for you. <laughs> How'd you do it, man? I mean, it's like, it's like a, there, a badge of honor. There are now more unmarried people in the United States right. by about a percentage point. We are than a single-majority nation. We are a single-majority nation. And it's not just some weird trend or quirk. For women no. especially, who historically have been economically dependent on men, have been sexually dependent on men sure. in eras when they couldn't control their reproduction through birth right. control or abortion, have been dependent on men if they wanted to have socially sanctioned families. Right. The fact that circumstances have changed and that now they can be earners, they can participate in public and political right. life, they can have liberated sex lives, they can mm. have families without being married, what that means, it displaces marriage as the organizing institution that that organizes gendered power, among other things. And it creates <clears throat> all kinds of new paths for, for women. It remaps right. women's adulthood in a way that is totally unprecedented and, that, and is discomforting to a lot of people. And <clears throat> <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you said it beautifully. Uh, what I would <laughs> paraphrase that is, a woman doesn't just have to marry a loser. That, that, like, no, like, but that's a revolution. No, it, <laughs> it is a revolution. Like, before you had to marry someone. You had to. And now yeah. it's more like, well, I'll marry somebody if somebody great comes along. It and raises, if it doesn't, I'm okay with that. It raises the bar right. on relationships. And right. it raises the bar on men's behavior. And, and you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, I, I love that word you used. You said they, you, women used to be hustled. Yeah. Hustled off to the highway of marriage. Yeah, hustled down that aisle. Right, you just, you were pushed. And at the beginning of your adulthood, because you were dependent, because you had right. to establish a relationship to the kind of American who could be an earner and who could and who could provide you with a socially sanctioned sex life and a family, that had to kick off your adulthood so that for hundreds of years, the median age, as long as they kept track, median age of first marriage for women fluctuated only between 20 and 22. In 1990, it crept up over 23 to 23.9. Today, it is over 27 and higher than that in many cities. So even for those who are marrying, they're doing it later and spending more years of their adulthood outside of this institution that historically really confined them. It's so interesting. Yeah. It... <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're a little younger than me. No, you're a lot younger than me. OK. <laughs> But who isn't at this point? Okay. <laughs> so, like, I graduated high school in 1974. Yeah. Okay, so I needed a summer job. Mm -hmm. You know. You know what my summer job was? <laughs> I sold pots and pans, door to door. And what they said was, uh, look, get high school <laughs> yearbooks, find the women who are not going to college, and knock on their door, because they will be needing pots and pans. Right. Right. This is... 
I was a pretty good pots and pans. No. <laughs> no, I only lasted about three days. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I, I, right. I, I, really, I would rather give blowjobs behind the 7-Eleven than, than do this job. This is just... Well, this is the difference, because right. with, if marriage was the thing that kicked off your adult life and you were a woman, you know what you were given? Pots and pans. Right. And dishes. And that was your life. Your work, in fact, was to support the public participation of your husband, the earning of your husband, by taking care of the family, doing the cooking, keeping the house. That's part of how you enforced marriage as the organizing principle, is because if you had a population of wives sure. dependent on these earners, they also then had to do the labor that enabled the men to go out into the world and earn. And that was pots and pans. That was babies. But, I mean, <laughs> there are still Republican politicians who talk about that in nostalgic terms. They talk about it obsessively. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is dogma for Republican right, politicians. Right. Mitt Romney gave a speech at a graduation just a few years ago where he urged everybody, you know what, go out there and get married. But don't just get married. Marry early. Right. This is this is Republicans who push the <laughs> push the idea that the so-called success sequence, right. graduating from college, getting graduating from high school or college, getting married, and then having a child, is the cure for poverty and everything else that ails America. But it's also because they think if women are on their own, it's going to mm -hmm. be government's job to support them more. That's a lot of what it is. You know, we're well, going to have it to... is the government's job to support them more, as the government has supported white men throughout our entire history. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The government enfranchised... The government enfranchised white men yeah, at the founding, of protected course. it throughout while disenfranchising yes. people of color and women. The government has built infrastructure that supported businesses that were owned by white men who profited. The government has <laughs> depressed by not protecting wage equality, by not offering paid leave, has depressed women's ability to participate in the workforce and compete against men for the money and the power, and has left them as this population that needs to do the domestic I, work. I, I'm just a pot and pan salesman. <laughs> Don't yell at me. <laughs> I'm just trying to sell my pots and pans, okay? All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, you're a great guest. I hope you join our panel sometime. Rebecca, thank you so much. All right.